Hi, my name is Paul Seal from CoachL.co.uk. Welcome to this episode four in this series where I show you how to do searching in Umbraco V8. As I've said previously, it's not the way to do search. It's just the way I do searching using Examine. Uh, in the previous episodes, we've got it set up using a Render MVC controller, uh, Surface controllers, and last episode we started using Examine. Uh, this episode, we're going to do a little bit more with Examine. We're going to um, use the stop analyzer to reduce some useless words like in and the and on from our search terms we're also going to uh, have a look at boosting and fuzzy search as well just to help you know with things like um the a plural of a word and things like that so it will try and find a close match rather than um just being specific to those words and with the boosting if certain fields are um it, we might want to say that if it's in the title, then it should be boosted higher than if it's in the keywords or vice versa. So let's get started by going into our search service. And first of all, what I want to do is move these terms out of here. So at the moment, we've got our terms declared in here. What we can do is we can take these out because nothing, these don't depend on anything that's inside it. And we could then do an if to check whether the, there are any terms. And then if there aren't any terms, then we just don't do the search. So we can say if terms is not equal to null and terms dot any. And, and then do that. So we're just putting this extra check in here to say only do the search if we have any search terms. And then that allows us then to um, do this stop analyzer searching. So where we can just filter out any of those words that we don't want. So actually we'll do that inside the if. So we've already said, uh, well, you'll see anyway. So if we do, uh, if we do a using for lucene dot search analyzer uh, lucene.net so using lucene dot net dot analysis that's what I was trying to say and then in here if there are any terms in the first place so if anything got entered in the search term then in here so then we want to filter these even more and just say terms equals oops terms dot where and then in here we're going to do another lambda expression we're going to say where not stop analyzer dot english stop word set and if we hover over this english stop word set is an unmodifiable set containing some common english words that are not usually useful for searching you might want to take this out you might not want to do this but i'm just showing you if you did want to do this this is how also, same goes for the Umbraco Navi Hide. You don't have to do this. Uh, it was a point. A good point was made in the comments that actually some people uh, might want these search results to show, even if they've been set to Umbraco Navi Hide. Maybe they don't want to be in the navigation, but they do want to be shown. Uh, the only reason why I've done that is because of the dot is visible. Um, is mapped to this on un Umbraco Navi Hide. So rather than just using it for navigation hiding, it can be used for excluded things from search results as well but uh, yeah so you could take this this first part out if you wanted to um so anyway back to this so what we want to say is where this contains uh, where it doesn't contain the um the word basically so for each of the terms only return back the terms where it doesn't contain that term and uh, let me just shrink this side pane uh, where are we we we'll do an and x dot length is greater than two again you can configure this but it, this one's usually good practice to do um because you can you can cause errors as well if you're searching for um very short words and things like that so uh it's worth it's worth doing uh, i think i'm missing a closing bracket there so that's the code for that one 
So we're saying terms, we're filtering out the terms again. So here we're, def we're saying get the terms by splitting it from the search term. And then here we're saying only get the terms which are within, um, aren't those stop words. So that's the stop words part. So if we just do that and then build the solution. So then what we can do is we can um, debug, debug attach to process and attach to IIS. That's how I'm debugging. You might be just running F5 and using, using it that way. And if we just hit return on here, we I don't think we've put any breakpoints in, so it should just run straight through. And then what I want to do is I want to just show you the terms before we filter them and after. And if you wanted to, you could you could do the filter here. You could do a check to say if terms aren't null, then filter them down even more. And then here, this check will still stand as well. So it doesn't even go into here. Uh, but let's say in the night garden. So if we were to put a breakpoint on here, do excuse me, I've got a cold at the moment. And if we F10, what we can see is we've got four search terms in the night garden. And we, that will allow us to go into here. But then when we've run this stop analyzer, we've only got two. So it was moved in and the. So that shows you how that then simplifies the search terms. So take out the search terms that we didn't want. Again, if this isn't what you want, then don't do this. But if it is, then this is how you do it. Or this is how I do it, put it that way. And then it carries on with the search. And now we will see results for night or garden. And we don't see any. So we could just do, I think there's some, um, there is some Latin on this site. So yeah, these have got a bit of Latin on them, lorem ipsum. Yeah, you can see lorem ipsum in here. So that's uh, why that's come up with a match. So uh, that was the first part that I wanted to show you. And then what I want to do now is just show you about um, boosting and fuzzy. Now, this isn't an in-depth way of doing uh, boosting and fuzzy, but it's just a bit of an introduction just to explain to you how I've used it on sites before and what benefits I've got from it. So you see with this one here, we're doing a, a group, we're doing an and, and we're saying and, and with a grouped or. So let's just have a look what this looks like in... Uh, examine if we just debug attach to process what i mean i don't mean examine i mean in uh, lucene so if we attach to this and then we just get before we execute we just put a breakpoint there and we can do um i don't know you are my sunshine I don't know why I'm doing this and something. <laughs> Let's just search. Right, so we'll skip past that. I'll press F9 to take the breakpoint off, and then I'll F5. So this query here, now when we hover over this, we can actually see the Lucene query. So if we just open this out, we want I want to just, uh, has, just to have a look at this query property. So it's made up of a few things. So we've got two clauses. We've got Umbraco Navi Hide, and then we've got this node name is this. So if we, I think there's a property called raw query. Uh, not sure where it is. I can't find it exactly at the moment, but basically you can get to the raw query. Uh, let's have a look, query. Results view, no, non-public members. Can't find it exactly, but there is a way to actually get to the raw query of this. But it's basically this. So you see how we've got brackets, minus Umbraco Navi Hide 1. So that's saying where it's not Umbraco Navi Hide 1. And then it's doing an and, and it's bracketed this and to say and any of these within this. And so basically put those all in brackets. So that was our grouped or. So any of those, 
And then what it does is in, in um, Umbraco in the back office, let's go to the back office for this. It's basically uh, doing the query and uh, examine is like a .NET wrapper, which will um, generate the Lucene that you need. So we do admin in that admin.com. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. Also, just to let you know, I'm going to make this pub, uh, this repo public soon as well. Probably when by the time this video is out, you'll be able to see this uh, Git repo. And I'll put the link in the description. But yeah, it's called um, PRJ Seal uh, Searching in Umbraco V8. So that's where it will be when I make it public. So just going back into here as well. So go to settings and then examine management. And then if we go to um, external index, we can search here. So we can use Lucene to search. So uh, one of those things that we had was the pro plus uh, Sorry, it was minus Umbraco. Actually, was it like this? I think it was open brackets minus Umbraco Navi hide and then one. I think that was it. So show me everything that is not Umbraco Navi hide. That might have been wrong, actually. Shall we have a look at it? Query. Let's get it to search again and we'll find what it was. So search again. Query minus and bracket have not be hard one. Oh, maybe. And the other thing we can do is look for no type alias. So let's just uh, stop this. A good way of doing this, what I like to do is it, so I can see what is actually in the index, is say let's have a look for 1104. Go to settings. So this is the ID of the home page. Go to examine management, external index, paste that in. And what we'll see is that we've got home with 39 fields here. And in those fields, these are all the field aliases. So like body text, we've been searching for that. And these are the values against those. So one of the ones we, we can look for is no type alias. And we can use Lucene to do that. So let's go into examine management again. We can just say no type alias, colon, and then we can call it home. And I don't know if it's capital H or not. Yes, yeah, so that was it. So no type alias there is home. You see that? Um, so that's one. That's just a very basic example of using Lucene in here. But the idea is that um, whatever the query is built up with in here, um, it will basically run the Lucene against your index and it will get the search results like that. So let's go back to this. So uh, now that I've just got into that a little, um, here we, we're basically saying it, it, what, the search terms, one of the search terms needs to match one of these fields, at least one of the search terms. So, um, but let's say if we search for biker, biker, we get biker jacket. But if we just search for bike, we don't get any results, but in theory, we might want biker jacket to show up. So let's make this uh, a fuzzy. Now, because this is, a, we're passing in an array of fields and then an array of search terms, there isn't any way built in to actually pass this in to make it fuzzy. So I built an extra extension on one of the sites that I did recently, which converts the string array to be able to use it as fuzzy. So we need to add a new folder in here and call it extensions. We need to add a class in this extensions and call it uh, string array extensions. And then in here, excuse me again, we want to um, add a method. Now, the method is going to be um, a public static I examine value array. Now, I'll explain what it is soon, but and then it's going to be called fuzzy. This string array 
So it basically go, it will create an, an extension method that changes the string array to be an I examine value array. And we need to put some usings up here. So it will be using examine, uh, using examine search, and also as it's a collection, using uh, system.collections.generic. So now we can uh, put in here. So if terms equals null, then just return null. Otherwise, we'll continue with this. We'll get a list of I examine values called values. And we'll put that into a new list of them. And then for each of the terms in the array, item var item in terms, we're going to add to this list values.add item.fuzzy. So we're basically calling fuzzy on each of these. And then we're going to return values dot to array. So we'll return our list of fuzzies, our I examine values as an array. So that will be our um, array of I examine value. And this is complained up here because we didn't make it a static class, yet we still had a static method. And I'm just going to use my shortcut just to remove those unused usings. So now we've got that, um, we can actually do a build. Oh no, we want to go back into our search service and we could say here, dot fuzzy. So terms, and then we want to tell it to use, so using uh, searching.site.extensions now, so that it knows about our fuzzy extension. And that's how we can use our terms dot fuzzy. So before you would only be able to do this on a single search term to make it fuzzy. What we've done here is we've created an I enumerable, sorry, an array of, if we have a look at this, we've created an array of I examine value basically. And that extension method brings those back and makes them all fuzzy. So if we build, rebuild, and then go to the front end. If we search now, what we should find is that bike does come up. So bike should return a result for biker jacket. So that's the example of how the fuzzy search is working. So it's even on bikers. So that's good. Um, it's it's come up with some results there, and I think that maybe is matching on pickers there as well. So that's the fuzzy uh, bringing up more results there. So that's the example for that fuzzy extension that I created and thought I'd share with you. And then we can do one as well um, for boosting. So if you th if you think about um, what I said earlier, some fields might be more important than others. So we might, if it appears in the title, it might be more important than if it appears uh, just in the body text. So we want to give it a boost. So again, because we have got multiple terms, we want to just quickly be able to do terms.boost. Um, what I did was create another extension. So we're going to create that one as well. So public static I examine value. And we're going to call this one boost. And that's going to work when it's a string array. Terms. So pretty much the same as the other one. And then in here, what we'll say is, I mean, we probably don't even need to type this out, but let's do it anyway. I've spelt static wrong. That's why it's complaining. Um, so this is complaining because we're not returned anything. So in here, let's just do if terms 
Again, you could just copy, paste, and change if you wanted to. Return null. So if terms is null, return null. And then list I examine value values equals new list I examine value. Then we'll for each item, sorry, var item in terms. And we'll do values dot add. And you probably can guess now what we'll do is we'll do item dot boost. And then we'll also need to tell it what the value is as well. So we're going to pass in a value. So this is how much to boost it by. So this is called boost. So in our boost method, we have to tell it how much we want to boost it by. Like it's basically giving this search result more points. And you, by the different fields, you can define more points. If it matches on this, then it gets more points. And then after that, we can just do return values dot to array. So now we've got that one set up. We can use that in our search service. And the way we use it in our search service is by um, what we want to do is we want to do dot grouped or and we do new array so here we're going to say node name and what we're going to say is terms dot boost and we're going to give it a value let's say give it a value of 10 there we go and then we're going to do a dot or like that so here, what we're saying is, if you find any uh, node names that match, boost it. And we can do this for all of these and give them different values. So that way we can say page title is worth a bit less, body text is worth less than that, and meta description less than that, and SEO keywords is less than that. And then we can change these values. And this is more of an art than a science, so you can tweak these to um, basically what you'll do is what you when you're working with your client, you can work out what they expect the results to be. And based on the data that they've entered in the content management system and the fields they've got, you can tweak these different boost values uh, to make it show the results what in, based on what they expect to see. Oh, actually, this one's got it on the keyword, so it should boost it more or vice versa so it's up to them really so that's how we're using the boost so let's uh, see if we can see this in action so if we uh, just return this So just let it load because it's uh, just done a rebuild. And then we'll try and change the data in the back office just to try and demonstrate this. So at the moment, biker jacket. And um, if we go into the back office on that one, and we've got uh, products. Like a jacket, and you can see that we've got clothing and bingo. So we could just have a look for clothing. Oh, it didn't return. Maybe we're not. Uh, is that field? Yeah, we're not searching by just category like that. So um, maybe if it was in one of the keywords, we could have done it like that. But let's let's have a look at biker in here, and let's take biker out of this so we'll just do jacket and we've got product name I'm not sure if we're using product name so we're not but we do have it in we do have and if I hover over this it should tell us what that field is it, it, it might just be description or it might be SEO meta description I'm not sure if it's got SEO properties on this one so um, this should at least change um, the results in terms of um, biker 
to-do list for the starter kit. So now it's not showing up for that property. Um, but let's say that it's in the description. Uh, let's go to document types, go to um, product. And we've got their description. So I'm just going to copy that. And I'm going to add it up here. And what I want to do, I'm going to swap node name for description. And then I'll just do another build. And I want this to boost it up higher with it being in the description. I want it to give it a boost. So if we refresh the page, so we can see that Jacket, even though it's not in the name, is at the top of the search results because it's obviously scored more in the search results. So that's one thing we can also inspect and have a look where we get this page of search results. Uh, debug attached to process. And I'll go to IIS. We'll see the search score that it returns. So if we search again, continue, and then if we look, have a look at the items, there should be a score somewhere, one of these properties. We should have our search score, uh, maybe here. I'm not sure exactly where that property is at the moment, but I know for definite that there is a score. Uh, I can't find it. <laughs> uh, well, I, I'll have to look at it into more detail, but I just wanted to just make you aware that you can actually see the, the search score. I wonder why that's items are of type. Oh, yeah, no, because I wanted it to be a search result. Oh, and I've got them got the page of content search results. So if I just go back again and I do a search. Ah, we've got a Lucene results now. So results view, oh, I can't get to them yet. All results, so page of results, let's have a look. No. Still doesn't like it. So for each item, examine search result. Here we go, score. So we can see it has got a score against it. So what you're doing with your boosting is you're improving the score in different ways. So that was the boosting side of things as well. So as I say, you get to just tweak that, change that however you want. Also notice that we've left fuzzy on. We don't have any just direct match searching, um, but we could put that in there. We could just take that off, the fuzzy search. So that was it mainly, really. I wanted to just show you about the stop analyzer, the fuzzy searching, and also the boosting of the search results uh, to see how you can just improve your exam in searching a little. Um, in the next episode, what we'll probably look at is some ways of adding categories and filtering by uh, searching by those categories. And we'll probably either look at categories in a drop down or a multi uh, no tree picker, like a taxonomy sort of thing. Uh, so we're, we're going to go into that side of things with the searching. But yeah, this was it really, just to show you about fuzzy and boost and also um, the stop analyzer. And before we do go, I just wanted to just point you in the direction of the our and Racco documentation. So there is documentation for most of this. Uh, and it should be able to help you with 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 the querying and all sorts of things like that. And you can also go straight to the examine repo where I mentioned before that there are tests as well for you for you. And don't forget you can ask questions on the Our and Racco forum to get help with all of this from the examine gurus and also just people that just learned a little bit more than you have so far. Um, and as usual, I always say this. Someone asked me. Oh, you should have put the link for uh, for buy you a coffee. I, I try not to promote it too much. 
on the actual thing. But if you want to, if anyone wants to, that's the link, koshare.co.uk slash coffee. Uh, you could buy me a coffee if you want to. Thanks to those that did buy me a coffee since the last episode. I do appreciate it. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to go now, but I hope that helps you a bit more with examine. And uh, I'll see you on the next episode.